Right then, it feels like a long time since we've done one of these, but here's a, here's a tactical preview. We haven't done one for ages, have we? But Manchester United are back to ruin our weekends again tomorrow against Leicester at home. Let's get into it. So Leicester currently lying slap bang in the middle of the table in 10th. It's not been a great bit of form for them lately. They've uh, won three, lost two of their last five, but they've also recently qualified for the quarterfinal in the Europa League. They did beat us 4-2 in the reverse fixture after a Harry Maguire horror show. Uh, we've also failed to beat Leicester now in our last four matchups. We've got three losses and one draw. Not ideal for us, I would say. Um, but... I do think we've got an opportunity to turn it around because they're shy at the moment. Um, and I know that's probably going to come and bite me on the ass, but this is what we're doing it. So how do they play? So how do they play then? Rodgers has been flexible in his tactics. He went with a 4-4-1-1 early in his career at Liverpool. Uh, he now really kind of goes with the 4-2-3-1, mostly at Leicester. Uh, but he's also gone with a 4-3-3. Uh, a four-one-four-one, um, or even going to a back three and going a three-four-two-one. So he he can and does mix it up. He goes aggressive or more aggressive for Rodgers when he goes in the four-two-three-one, and that's proved to be the success for them. Um, but the wheels have fallen off a little bit this season, and I don't know if that's because he's temper a tampering with the formations or he's tampering with the formations because he can't quite get the right sort of tune out of the team. I'm not sure which one came first in that. They have a heavily loaded midfield, which implies that they're going to try and be more possession-based. And, and of course, Brendan Rodgers is kind of known for that sort of approach. He likes to have a double pivot to provide an extra layer of protection towards the defence. Um, but they've always been a, a team really good in transition, certainly under Puel, and they played on the counter-attack under Ranieri when they had that season that they won the title. They look to highlight what Jamie Vardy can do, still a, a very lethal striker in the Premier League, and they look to try and attack teams and get at teams very much using that style of play. Now, they've lost a lot of that counter-attacking power because they've been so poor defensively this season. They've not been as solid at the back. They've been conceding early in games, which then means that other teams are allowed to sit back against them, and that completely nullifies what they're trying to do from a counter-attacking uh, sense. So they generally look to try and sit in a bit of a mid-block and sometimes not fully committing to either being possession-based or counter-attacking means that they're not actually doing either. And I think that's why they find themselves in this not really doing either kind of thing of being 10th in the table. Starting eleven is fairly good, man for man. You take a lot of them at United, but they're not getting a tune out of some of their parts at the moment. They look like they kind of tend to draw the opposition forward, but don't really have the, the ability to be able to hold them back when they do. And then they kind of look like they want to hold the ball and dominate possession, but they're exposing some frailties at the back when they do that as well. So they're in this kind of middle ground where United found themselves in, where they... We can't fully commit to being an, a, an offensive front foot attacking side because there's areas of our team which actually suffer when we do that. So they're getting inconsistent results um, as a consequence of that. And they've been inconsistent and they've been frail defensively, but it doesn't mean that they don't still pose a threat to us and it doesn't mean that they don't still pose a threat going forward because they absolutely do. So, team news for Leicester. Uh, All Brighton looks to be a doubt, uh, and indeed he may not play again this season after the knee injury they got just before the break. Jamie Vardy, also a major doubt, uh, which would be a massive bonus for us, I think, but he, he should and maybe could just about make the game. Um, hopefully it's too early to him to start, though. He's been out since early March. Predicted 11. I reckon no surprises here. Schmeichel, uh, Ricardo, R Ricardo Soyuncu, uh, Fofana, Justin... Uh, Tealman's Dewsbury Hall, Luckman, Madison, Barnes, and Ian Acho. A couple of names missing in there, and a little bit of quality missing in there as well, which is um, why I think United actually have a chance this time round. Uh, James Madison, probably the key man, I think, this time around. Um, 13 goals, 7 assists this season. Bit of an anomaly in Leicester's season for how well he's performing. Um, massive creative force, very technical 
technically gifted footballer, threat from set pieces, um, just has quality, but also brings a little bit of spectacular as well. Just a really good footballer. If you give him any sort of time um, in and around the day, he's going to hurt you. Leicester under Rodgers generally do end up playing a bit more of possession based, and that's reflected in the stats. Although, again, very much in the middle ground as their 50.1% possession. But it does put them in the top half of the table. Their pass completion at 80% shows they are very competent when they are in possession. They have conceded 46 goals this season, which is the seventh worst record in the league. You know, really underlining that inconsistency that they've got. Only Arsenal have committed more defensive errors when it comes to giving a chance to the opposition, which shows you that they can be rattled and shaky at the back. They've attempted uh, just 222 crosses this season, which is the least attempts um, over the whole course of the season. And actually, that was something that Leicester were very, very good at and known for almost. And it's the least amount by over 70 crosses because the nearest team to them, um, which is Watford, have got 70 more. So it's a real low threat from crosses that you're going to get from them. Uh, and they have attempted the second least amount of pressures this league um, with 845, which epitomises how they're sort of hitting this low block, sort of middle ground, kind of not fully engaging, looking to try and defend using team structure and shape rather than going out and taking the ball off you. Um, but they intercept passes well. If you've uh, put sloppy passes into midfield, which, well, we do, um, they can flip there and hit you on the counter very quickly. They are good at that still. So how do you beat them? Um, starting 11-wise, I would like to see, or I expect to see, rather than would like to see. There's a bit of a, not quite sure which way to go with this here, but I expect, I think, to see De Gea, Delo, Lindelof, Maguire, and Tellez. Why no Varane? Well, he got injured on international duty, and I don't know the severity of those until after we've seen the press conference, but because of the edit time that it takes to do these previews, I have to record this before knowing that. Um, I didn't want to pick Maguire. Almost out of spite, didn't want to pick Maguire, but he's playing. Might as well get used to it. Midfield's more interesting. Uh, I think United have got a real opportunity here to put a good midfield out. I'd like to see Matic. But I think you could also see McTominay featured here. And I wouldn't be surprised as a secondary option if they don't go 4-2-3-1 against United. Leicester could go to a three at the back to try and protect some of that defensive frailties. Especially if he's had a couple of weeks to overthink it. I think you've got a real chance that United might go up against a back three Leicester here and they look to go four in midfield um, with three at the back and, and really sort of overload those areas. If they do, I'd like to see Matic in there. Um, but I could also see United maybe trying to match that up with more men, men in midfield. McTominay, Pogba, Bruno is quite front foot offensive. Doing that away from home, it's a very Bundesliga thing to do. And Ralph obviously could come and deliver that. But I also don't know for sure if that's the right thing to do. I think Matic would be a better option. I could also make a case for Fred. I'd probably look to go with Fred if I had Matic over Pogba. But I also want to try and hurt this team a little bit. So I went with Pogba uh, and with Bruno. Bruno withdrawn in a 4-3-3 rather than United matching up and going 4-2-3-1 with them. I want to see United go 4-3-3, just a single pivot. Rashford, Ronaldo, Sancho. Rashford could be interchangeable here with Alanga, but I think he'll get the opportunity um, after having a couple of weeks off, not going on international duty. Let's hope he's worked on some stuff in the break. Ralph seems to think he's working hard in training. I think that eventually starts to pay off, but I also wouldn't be shocked to see Alanga in there as well to continue the good form that he's on. Um, Sancho's probably going to be the key man here for United. Um, he's like him and Bruno, I guess, if you count international football, and I, and I don't, actually. So, actually, Sancho's the man in form. He's probably got a little bit of a point to prove as well, not getting selected for England. Hopefully, he's not asked, um, but he might be. He might be like, hang on, I'm playing well for my club here. What's going on? So, how'd you beat Leicester? Um, you've, got to, you've got to not lose the game to win the game first. So, first and foremost, with Varane possibly being out, you've got a dangerous and pacey attack. That's why I kind of want Matic in there. I can also see you going with Fred rather than Pogba because United are just, we can't find clean sheets. We can't buy clean sheets at the moment. So 
a high pressing game could be effective against a Leicester team that's going to have a defensive back line that's going to give you opportunities and give you errors. But you got to try and get a clean sheet. This is where United's season's got to... If we're going to have a genuine attempt at getting into the top four this season, it's going to be on the back of getting clean sheets. And we're not very good at getting clean sheets. So start here. At home to Leicester is a great opportunity to do that. Um, Vardy plays on the shoulder. He's going to know all about Maguire. And he'll turn him inside out if Vardy plays. Ian Acho, still a threat. We need to be less easy to break on the transition. I'm hoping there's been a bit of time for the, the club to fix things, learn things, put some video sessions and actual sessions in play this week. And then you've got you to gotta win the midfield battle. If I'm Brendan Rodgers, I do seriously consider going to the 3-4-2-1 the uh, in this to pack that midfield out. Because if you dominate the midfield against United, you're going to have a quite easy time. And they could easily do it. And Didi being out is a plus in United's column. But that might also tip the balance with Brendan Rodgers wanting to go with a 3-4-2-1. Uh, and he might go, no Ndidi, you know, quantity if I haven't got the quality. And might just put extra manpower in there. And I think that would really throw United. And I think it would actually make United um, really vulnerable to just being smashed through the middle. Especially with a mid-block. You've really st uh, stuffed that up. You got to stop Tillman uh, Thiel dictating. If he plays well, Leicester play well. You got to capitalize on there being no Ndidi. So that's why I, I lent towards Pogba and Bruno to try and have two playmakers in there and make them worry about us a little bit. Attack might be the best form of defense in this. Our defense is as shaky as their defense in my mind. I think you go for them. You force them back. You're at home. Take the game to them. You can hurt them. Be aggressive. Be fast in transition. Move the ball forward at pace. Unnerve what is a team that's not high on confidence, that does concede a lot of goals, that can start to flap if they go behind. Try to control the game. We've had a couple of decent performances lately, but we haven't had a consistent run of performances. The defensive issues that we've got, some of the injuries that we've got, and there's not many, there's like Cavani, Varane. Not a lot of injuries to, for us to deal with. We're probably going to need more than one goal to win this. If I'm a betting man, and sometimes I am, I wouldn't be putting 1-0 United on this. 2-1, maybe even 3-2, you might get some joy out of that. I unfortunately can also see a, a draw in this, but I don't think it'll be 0-0. There will be goals in this game. It's can United get a couple of early goals and relax ourselves because we're a shaky team at the moment. We're an unconfident side. So I want to see if we can actually pull one out of the bag a little bit. Let me know your thoughts, your comments, as usual, all in the comment section below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.